Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about an action fantasy film called Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Somewhere inside the ocean, a powerful deity known as Poseidon has decided to visit the city of men as an unusual disturbance has forced him to come towards the shore. The god eventually transforms into his human form and quickly makes it towards the city, where he secretly goes onto the Empire State Building and sees that his brother Zeus has been waiting for him this whole time. It's quickly revealed that Zeus has apparently lost his greatest weapon known as the Lightning Bolt, and he accuses Poseidon's son to be the thief who stole the object. This causes the deity to become furious as he denies the accusations immediately, but Zeus refuses to listen and demands that his weapon be returned in 14 days or he'll be forced to start a terrible war. At the same time, Poseidon's half-human child known as Percy is attending a lecture inside a museum alongside his friend called Grover as they listen to their professor talk about the history of ancient Greece. However, before the class can finish, the main character is approached by another teacher who demands that they speak privately right now. This gives Percy no other choice but to go inside the adjacent room, while he immediately noticed that the woman has somehow jumped onto the scaffoldings nearby. What's even worse, the teacher quickly transforms into a horrific demon, who attacks the main character immediately and accusing him of stealing the lightning bolt. Luckily, just before the monster can take away Percy, the fight is quickly interrupted by the man's teacher, who threatens to kill the monster right away. This causes the enemy to release the main character in fear as it rushes out from the building immediately. It's quickly revealed that the people are aware that Zeus is hunting down the main character, and the professor has no choice but to give Percy a powerful weapon, while telling Grover to bring his friend towards the camp for half-gods. The people eventually make it onto the roads alongside Percy's mother, and the woman reveals to her son that his father is actually the god of the sea. However, Poseidon was not allowed to stay with his family, as Zeus forbade the gods from ever being together with their human children. This means that Poseidon can never help the main character directly, and the only place that can protect him now is the camp for demigods, where monsters are kept outside by the magical barrier. What the people don't realize is that they are already being followed by a giant creature who quickly throws a cow in front of the car, while causing the vehicle to smash towards the ground from the impact. Luckily, the people manage to survive the crash, while Grover eventually reveals that he's actually a satyr as he breaks the windshield and allowing everyone to escape from the vehicle. However, before the people can escape from this location, they quickly see that the giant monster is rushing their way and forcing them to run desperately towards the opposite direction. Very soon, the people manage to make it towards the camp's entrance as they immediately rush towards the inside, but Percy quickly noticed that the magical barrier is stopping his mother from entering the safe haven. This causes the woman to be captured by the giant monster who reveals itself to be an enormous minotaur that quickly teleports the human towards a different dimension. Percy sees this and decides to take out his weapon as he begins fighting the giant monster to try and save his mother, but only gets knocked away like a flying ragdoll and almost crushed to death by the massive enemy. However, the fight eventually results in the minotaur breaking its own horn, and Percy manages to quickly pull out the object while stabbing the monster right in the chest and killing the giant creature as a result, but also causing himself to faint from the stress of the battle. When the main character eventually regains consciousness, he realizes that he's inside a hospital while being watched over by Grover, who congratulates the man for still being alive. However, Percy has no intention of staying inside the camp, as he desperately wants to go look for his mother, but Grover tells the man that he should train to become stronger before heading out for his quest. Very soon, the two arrives towards the edges of the island, and Percy is shocked to see that his teacher who saved him earlier is actually a centaur called Chiron, who's also in charge of the training camps, and the professor has the perfect idea to begin training the main character. The centaur quickly gathers all the demigods inside this location, while assigning Percy towards the blue team that's being led by a man called Luke, who welcomes the main character towards his group. Very soon, the training begins as the opposing teams try to capture the opponent's flags, while the demigods begin fighting like it's a real battle. Luckily, Percy manages to make it out unharmed alongside Luke, as they try to look for the opponent 
opponent's flag, but the people are quickly ambushed by the opposing team, which forces them to fight immediately. However, the two are quickly outnumbered by the enemies, while Luke is forced to sacrifice himself to hold back the opponents and giving Percy the chance to escape from the ambush. This allows the main character to eventually make it towards the river, as he quickly noticed that the enemy flag is right across the water. Without a second thought, Percy quickly goes towards the enemy's base to claim his victory, but is immediately stopped by a woman called Annabeth, who begins attacking the main character without mercy. This forces Percy to fight back right away, but the man is completely overpowered by his opponent, who eventually knocks the main character onto the ground while all the people begin cheering for the girl's name. However, Percy refuses to be defeated so easily, as he begins crawling towards the river by instinct, and the man is shocked to see that the water is actually healing all the wounds on his body. What's even more, Percy begins to feel an incredible power surging through his body as he begins attacking the enemy team and easily defeating all the opponents at the same time. This causes Annabeth to charge forwards and attack the main character furiously, but Percy manages to disarm the girl immediately while completely defeating her in the process. The people seize this and all begins backing down in submission while allowing the main character to retrieve the flag and winning the competition as well. Sometimes later, all the demigods are celebrating after the tournament while Percy has gained a lot of popularity after his victory, especially amongst the ladies, but the man is clearly a glutton for punishment as he only seems to be interested in the girl who almost killed him during the competition. However, before the two can figure out a time to do some bedtime exercises, they are quickly interrupted by a malevolent entity known as Hades who has come to hunt down the main character as he begins throwing fireballs towards the crowd and causing chaos in the process. It's quickly revealed that Hades was the one who sent the Minotaur to kidnap the main character's mother, and the evil god wants Percy to give him Zeus's lightning bolt in exchange for the woman's life. This gives the man no other choice but to go rescue his mother, despite never having the lightning bolt in the first place. Luckily, Percy's new friends have decided to help out the main character as well, while Annabeth claims that there's only one person who can help them sneak inside the realm of Hades which is also known as the Underworld. Very soon, the people arrive towards Luke's home, and it's quickly revealed that the man is really the son of Hermes, and he has numerous artifacts from his father that can help the team find their way towards Hades. This includes a pair of flying shoes that can help them levitate, and a powerful shield that can protect the users from all elements. However, the most difficult task is actually leaving the realm after entering the underworld, as they need a special pearl for each person to teleport away from the location afterwards. Very soon, the people manage to arrive towards the destination where the first pearl is located, and the group is surprised to see the numerous statues standing inside the building. What's even more, the team eventually locates a fountain that's filled with gold coins that only the ancient Greeks used, meaning that the people must be very close in finding the pearl as well. The team eventually decides to split up to cover more grounds, while they begin noticing that the expressions on the sculptures are becoming more terrifying at the same time. Very soon, Annabeth finds another person inside the building, who tells her that they are in terrible danger as they need to get away from this location immediately. However, before the people can get to the exit, they are quickly stopped by a mysterious woman in shades, who reveals that she was responsible for turning all her visitors into stone. It turns out that the woman is known as Medusa, and she was cursed by the gods with a terrible power, as anyone who looks inside her eyes would be frozen forever while being turned into nothing by a statue in the process. This causes Annabeth to close her eyes immediately, while Medusa tries continuously to turn her into stone. Luckily, the girl is quickly found by her teammates, as Percy manages to distract their enemy and causing the monster to chase him furiously, while Grover takes the chance to rescue Annabeth by freeing her from the sculpture that's holding her arm. At the same time, Percy continues to run away from the enemy who's chasing behind relentlessly, but he's quickly tricked by the hideous monster, who manages to topple the statues right on top of the main character. This eventually allows the enemy to capture the man, as she tries to pry open the main character's eyes while forcing Percy to stay here forever. Luckily, before the demigod can be killed by the monster, a truck charges towards them right away while knocking the enemy onto the ground. It's quickly revealed that the others have come to rescue their friend, as they manage to stun the monster temporarily and allowing Percy to charge forwards while slicing off the enemy's head. This allows the people to finally come out from the vehicle as they see the monster's head on the floor, and the team decides to take the enemy's remains as a weapon to be used against their enemies in the future. What's even more, 
Percy manages to notice the pearl that's located on Medusa's bracelet while taking the magical object that allows them to escape from the underworld. Very soon, the people begin traveling towards their next destination by following the enchanted map and eventually arrives towards a giant museum for the ancient gods. When the group eventually makes it inside the building, they quickly notice that the second pearl is located directly on top of the giant statue's head, which means that they have to somehow climb the sculpture to retrieve the object. This forces the people to wait until nightfall, while they secretly sneak inside the giant museum, but only to find out that the janitors are still cleaning the building's floors. Luckily, Annabeth manages to conjure up a plan as she begins shooting her sleeping darts towards the workers and quickly knocking out the people from the shadows. The team sees this and immediately takes out the flying shoes from Luke, while Percy runs towards the giant statue and begins levitating towards the sculpture's head. This allows the main character to grab onto the inclining surface as he slowly climbs towards the giant crown and eventually managing to take the pearl away from the sculpture while quickly landing onto the ground in victory. However, before the people can leave the building, they are immediately stopped by the janitors that have somehow regained consciousness who begins talking in synchronization towards the team and demanding them to return the lightning bolt. It's quickly revealed that the workers are actually monsters in disguise as they begin unveiling their true form as a massive hydra and completely towering over all the people. The team sees this and tries desperately to run for their lives, while the monster shoots flames towards the people and causing Percy to drop the pearl in the process. This forces the demigods to take out their weapons as they try to fight back the monster from behind the cover, but Percy eventually manages to find an opening while charging towards the enemy's numerous heads and dodging the flamethrowers at the same time. Luckily, the main character manages to eventually cut across the enemy's neck as he begins slicing off the monster's heads while inflicting tremendous damage towards the creature and causing the giant serpent to fall onto the ground. However, just before the people can celebrate their victory, they quickly notice that something is wrong as the gigantic monster begins recovering rapidly and growing even more heads in the process while becoming much more powerful than ever before. This forces the team to change their strategy as Annabeth rushes forwards to distract the monster by shooting her arrows while giving Percy the chance to retrieve the magic pearl, but the monster manages to stop the main character and trapping the demigod behind the sculpture by using its deadly flames. Luckily, just before Percy is killed, the main character begins sensing his power coming from the water fountains and eventually manages to conjure up a massive wave towards the giant monster while forcing the serpent to fall back immediately. The demigod sees this and quickly manages to retrieve the pearl as he begins running away alongside his friends, but only to find out that the doors towards the outside have been locked from the very beginning. This gives the people no other choice but to take out Medusa's head and points it directly towards the giant serpent while eventually causing the enemy to become a massive sculpture in the process and allowing the demigods to win the battle. Very soon, the team decides to continue towards their next destination to retrieve the final pearl as they eventually make it towards the Lotus Casino inside Las Vegas. However, when the people enter inside the colorful building, they are quickly stopped by a bunch of waiters who offers them lotus cakes to eat for free. Without giving it a second thought, the people begin consuming the food right away and quickly starts feeling a strange sensation, which makes them completely forget about their quest to search for the pearl. This causes the group to become mesmerized by the numerous entertainments inside the building as their continuous consumptions of the lotus flower is keeping them hypnotized from reality. However, Percy eventually manages to stumble upon the pearl on the gambling table, which makes him remember their true purpose for coming here in the first place as he refuses to consume the lotus flowers any longer. Realizing that they fell for the enemy's trap, the main character quickly goes towards his friends and tries to awaken the people from the trance while telling the team that they must get away from this location immediately. This causes the people to run towards the exits right away as the securities try desperately to stop the group from leaving this building, but the demigods manage to fight off the enemies with ease and allowing Percy to grab onto the magical pearl at the same time. Very soon, the group manages to make it towards a show car and rushes inside immediately before driving the vehicle off the stage and crashing directly through the front doors which quickly allows them to escape away from this living nightmare. However, before the people can leave the city, they quickly realize that they have been stuck inside the casino for multiple days and they only have 24 hours before the gods commence the horrific war. Luckily, the people manage to find their final destination by using the map 
As they eventually arrive towards the famous Hollywood mountain, it's quickly revealed that the door towards the home of Hades is located right behind the Hollywood sign. As a mysterious entrance begins to appear on the ground, this allows the group to venture inside. As they eventually arrive towards a room that's filled with skeletons, while they see the infamous entity who's in charge of taking dead souls towards the underworld. Luckily, the people manage to pay the person with the golden coins from Medusa's lair, which allows them to eventually get inside the boat as they venture towards the other dimension that's filled with misery and death. Very soon, the people are brought in front of a massive castle that belongs to Hades, while the group slowly gets off the boat with their weapons drawn and carefully enters inside the mysterious building. However, the team quickly encounters a pair of aggressive hellhounds that threatens to kill the people immediately, but they are eventually rescued by the wife of Hades who's also known as Persephone. Surprisingly, the woman has no intentions of harming her guests as she decides to bring the people towards her husband, who quickly reveals himself to be the king of the underworld as he demands the main character to take out the thunderbolt right away. However, Percy denies to have ever stolen the weapon from Zeus, which causes Hades to become furious as he quickly releases the main character's mother so that the demigod can watch the woman die. Percy sees this and drops his weapons on the ground as he rushes to embrace the woman, but Hades quickly notices that the lightning bolt was hiding inside the main character's shield this whole time. This allows the evil god to finally obtain the magical weapon as he becomes much more powerful in the process, and the people quickly realize that Luke was the one who stole the lightning bolt from the gods. However, despite finally getting what he wanted, Hades has no intentions of letting the people go free as he plans on taking the souls of the prisoners while killing them all in the process. Luckily, just before the group is pushed inside the flames, Persephone quickly betrays her husband and takes away the lightning bolt as she unleashes a powerful blast towards Hades and knocking him onto the walls like a flying ragdoll. This eventually allows the others to be saved from the flames as they rush behind the goddess immediately to fight, but Persephone quickly tells the people that she's not their enemy. It's quickly revealed that the woman has wanted revenge against her husband for a very long time as Hades was responsible for taking her away from her family while trapping her inside the underworld for countless years. Surprisingly, the woman eventually returns the lightning bolt towards the main character as she wants Percy to prevent the gods from starting the war as well. However, before the people can leave this location, they quickly realize that they only have three magical pearls, which means that one person has to stay behind. To their surprise, Grover volunteers to stay inside the underworld as he clearly wants to have some bedtime exercises with the devil's wife. Very soon, the people place their individual pearls onto the ground before stepping on the objects, which causes them to be finally teleported away from this world and eventually returning the humans onto the Empire State Building which is connected directly towards the heavens. However, just before the group can make it towards the entrance, they are quickly stopped by a flying enemy who turns out to be Luke. It's quickly revealed that he was actually the mastermind behind everything that happened as he wants the gods to destroy themselves so that his generation can become the new rulers of humanity. Very soon, the villain begins attacking Percy from the sky as he tries to stop the main character from returning the lightning bolt and quickly manages to kick the demigod towards the ground while stealing the magical weapon at the same time. This allows Luke to become even more powerful as he begins shooting devastating energy beams towards the people while causing huge explosions in the process. The villain sees this and quickly takes the chance to escape, not realizing that Percy still has the flying shoes as well, which allows the main character to chase after the enemy towards the sky. This causes the two demigods to crash together in the sky as they fight desperately to obtain the lightning bolt, but Luke manages to gain the advantage while knocking the main character away using tremendous force. Luckily, Percy eventually recovers from the attack, but is forced to escape inside a skyscraper while the enemy is chasing closely behind. However, the main character quickly manages to turn around the battle as he launches towards the opponent from the side, while causing Luke to drop the lightning bolt in the process. This allows the main character to finally obtain the magical weapon as he tries to fly back towards his friends, but is quickly attacked by the enemy from behind, which causes Percy to fall from the sky while crash landing onto a building. Things become even worse when the enemy manages to reclaim the lightning bolt once again, while forcing the main character into a corner. Luckily, just before Percy can be killed, he begins using his powers just like before, as he summons waves of water from the pressure tanks and launching the liquids directly towards Luke, while knocking down the enemy using tremendous force. This 
Lance causes the opponent to be completely defeated in the process, but Luke eventually manages to get up, as he refuses to lose the fight so easily. The main character sees this and quickly summons his trident from the water, as he launches the weapon directly towards the enemy and throwing the man crashing into the ocean. This eventually allows Percy to take the lightning bolt back towards his friends, as he quickly goes inside the secret entrance that leads the people directly towards the other gods. Luckily, just before Zeus decides to finally finish the Doomsday Countdown, Percy manages to arrive just in time and return the lightning bolt towards its rightful owner, while explaining that Luke was the one who stole the weapon in the first place as he wanted the gods to destroy themselves. This makes the people realize their own foolishness as they eventually fall back in contemplation, while the main character's father finally gets the chance to meet his child once again. The god apologizes for never being by Percy's side, but expresses how much he actually loves his son, and eventually managing to reconciliate with the main character. Sometimes later, Percy eventually makes it back to the camp, and is surprised to see that Grover has returned to the human world, after having many exciting bedtime exercises with the wife of Hades. What's even more, Percy seems to have finally found a true reason for staying inside this camp as well, as they begin training to protect the human world from future dangers. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.